In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about hearing aid fitting ranges. Coming up. Hey guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. At this point, you probably already understand that the more severe your hearing loss is, the more amplification that you need to successfully treat your hearing loss. For instance, someone with a severe to profound hearing loss requires way more amplification than someone who has a mild to moderate hearing loss. Therefore, it wouldn't make much sense to fit both of these hearing losses with the exact same hearing aid. Or would it? To better understand what I'm about to talk about, we first have to understand the main components of a hearing aid. Now I'm going to oversimplify hearing aid technology a little bit here, but in general, there are three main components of a hearing aid. You have the microphone, the amplifier, and the receiver. Each one of these components plays a major role in how a hearing aid functions. But when it comes to the severity of your hearing loss, the receiver is key. I want you to think of the receiver as a speaker, which is the part of the hearing aid that sends amplified sound into your ear canal. Receivers come in different sizes. Starting with the least amplification and working our way to the most amplification, you have standard, medium, power, super power, and ultra power receivers. The availability of these different receiver sizes gives us the ability to treat nearly any severity of hearing loss, from mild to profound. If you have a severe to profound hearing loss, you need a really powerful receiver to be able to amplify sound loud enough for you to get audibility. On the other hand, if you have a mild to moderate hearing loss, you only need a receiver that is strong enough to treat that level of loss. Simply put, you need to make sure that you have the right size of receiver for the type of hearing loss that you have, otherwise nothing else matters. Something to keep in mind is that not all hearing aid styles can accommodate all of these different receiver types. For instance, if you want an invisible in the canal hearing aid or an IIC, you cannot put a super power or ultra power receiver inside of it. The hearing aid is just too small to accommodate these larger receiver sizes. Not to mention, if you were to jam a super power or ultra power receiver inside of an invisible in the canal hearing aid, you would most likely experience feedback or whistling sound because just too much sound would be leaking out of your ear canal and recycling back through the microphone. So how do you determine which size of hearing aid receiver is appropriate for your level of hearing loss? Well, this is where hearing aid fitting ranges come into play. This is why all reputable hearing aid manufacturers publish fitting ranges so you can identify whether or not a particular receiver size would be able to accommodate your level of hearing loss. This also helps you to understand whether or not a particular style of hearing aid would be suitable for you as well. First, you need to know your hearing loss thresholds. You can find these on your audiogram. You will need these X's and O's to determine which receiver size is appropriate for each of your ears. Second, you need to have an idea of which hearing aid style you want, whether it's an invisible in canal, a half shell, a full shell, a receiver in canal, or a behind the ear style hearing aid. Third, you will need to find the fitting ranges of that particular hearing aid style and brand. They will often look something like this. For instance, a Phonak Audeo Paradise hearing aid has its own fitting ranges, and a Resound 1 hearing aid has its own fitting ranges. Once you find the fitting ranges for the hearing aid that you want, you need to see if your X's and O's fit inside of the shaded range on the graph. If the particular hearing aid you want does not have a receiver option that your thresholds fit into, then you will not be a good candidate for that hearing aid. The nice thing about receiver in canal hearing aids is that they're very modular, meaning that you can actually interchange different receivers on the same hearing aid body that goes behind your ear. If your hearing loss gets worse over time, all you have to do is change out the receiver wire to a stronger one to accommodate your new level of hearing loss. When it comes to custom hearing aids, your options become more limited. Again, if you start with an invisible in the canal hearing aid with your mild to moderate hearing loss and your hearing loss gets significantly worse, you can't take that same custom hearing aid and put a stronger receiver inside of it. It would require you to actually go up in sizes of hearing aids, which means that you have to get a brand new hearing aid. If you have a profound hearing loss, you may require a behind the ear, otherwise known as BTE hearing aid, that uses a thick tube that goes into a custom ear mold inside of your ear. Another thing to note is that just because your hearing loss thresholds fall within the fitting range of a particular hearing aid receiver, it does not mean that you'll obtain the full amount of benefit 
out of that receiver. I regularly get patients who come into my clinic with existing hearing aids and they have power receivers but an open dome on that receiver, which basically just allows all of the amplification that they would receive from the power receiver to leak outside of the open dome, cycle back through the microphones causing feedback, and forcing the hearing care provider to lower the amount of amplification that they receive. It does no good if you have the correct receiver size, but you don't have the appropriate coupling to make sure that that sound stays inside of your ear. This is why selecting the appropriate dome or ear mold vent size is just as critical as selecting the appropriate fitting range of hearing aid receiver. In fact, most hearing aid manufacturers actually require that you have a custom ear mold if you're going to be using a super or ultra power hearing aid receiver. Otherwise, you would never actually obtain the benefit of that receiver even if you fall inside of that receiver fitting range. Okay, hopefully this video has given you a better understanding of what a hearing aid fitting range is and has given you an idea of which receiver size you ultimately need to treat your hearing loss. Most hearing aid styles can accommodate a wide range of hearing losses. You just have to make sure that your hearing loss falls inside of their fitting range and it is a great place to start if you're looking for new hearing aids. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.